This is smithy.tv. Hi, I'm Katie Ellman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto with filmmaker Jared Bratt. What inspired you to get into the film business? Oh, wow. What inspired me to get into the film business? I would say it starts with family. Mm -hmm. And it starts with uh, just being uh, constantly taken to movies from a very impressionable age, mm -hmm. where that became like a, a family ritual. Mm -hmm. and. You know, that just spiraled, and then eventually I grew up, and I love movies. So really, that's where it all starts. Were there any films in particular that really stand out for you in your childhood? Uh, yes, Die Hard 1. <laughs> that would be the, uh, the first time, the first experience I can remember where I'm sitting in the theater, and, you know, uh, specifically at the scene when John McClane's pulling glass out of his feet. I, like, I, I think I was crying or really immersed in it at that point. And that's when I think I was exposed to, well, the power of movies and how movies can really bring you through a wide range of emotions, even if it is an action movie. Yeah. You recently finished uh, shooting your film Streamer. Yep. Tell me about the story in that film. Okay, well, <clears throat> it's a psychological horror. Uh, I would also say it's a tragic love story. And I think by the end of it, you, you see how that parallel works hand in hand. Um, I, I try not to give too much away because I feel like it's such a small contained piece that if I give like a money plot moment or a money shot away, it just like, it ruins it. But I will say that um, it's a tragic love story between a tub dweller, as I like to call the main character played by Ryan Fisher. And what exactly is a tub dweller? Tub dweller is somebody, well, it's somebody who spends a lot of time in their bathroom just dwelling, but then you could read even further into that and say, well, a tub dweller could be somebody who dwells a lot mm -hmm. internally and then, you know, overthinking stuff in general. And, uh, and it's that love, of, love triangle or love, tragic love story between the tub dweller and then, excuse my language, but a mind fucker. And that's just somebody who's, you know, toying with the guy's head, essentially. And that's played by Sidney Penner. Is this based on true experience? <laughs> um, honestly, it's, it's uh, I'd say it's personal, personal experience combined with uh, certain movies that I like. Okay. Like uh, Ethan Hawke's directorial debut, Chelsea Walls. I don't know if you've seen that. or But there's an awesome scene with... Uh, actor Steve Zahn and he's in a bathroom and he's talking to an escort and he's pretty much talking like you know classic funny Steve Zahn but ultimately the point of the story is that he's talking about how he's not doing anything with his life and the scene goes on for about four or five minutes really raw and and, and I find really compelling mm -hmm. and so all personal experience aside I watched that scene and I was looking for something to do with these two actors that I got who I think are dynamite and to me, that scene is a compelling scene. And I would watch 70 minutes of this guy in that bathroom just talking. So that's kind of like an influence right there. I'm like, well, if you can get the acting and a plot, it shouldn't matter that it takes place in a bathroom or it's five minutes or eight minutes or 10 minutes. So. How did everything go on set? Did it run smoothly? Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of my biggest things that I've learned up until this point is just, and it's always been a given, but, you know, it's easier said than done, but like, work your ass off, you know, plan, prepare, obsess, in my case. Like, I just put everything on hold as, as much as I can, and I focus on one goal, and that's, well, first it's getting it shot, and, and now I'm just obsessed with the editing of it. Mm -hmm. But that's been, been the biggest thing I can say, is that uh, plan and prepare, and then you'll end up with something. It might, you know, stuff's always changing, but you'll get something. And you're also working on a feature film called Shut Up. Yes. What was the inspiration behind that project? Um, inspiration, well, I wrote a 20-page draft back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was like, all, you know, all I had was a camera, which was the, I still have it, uh, Panasonic AG-DVX100. And 
And just having a camera and a few buddies that you like movies with, it's really about, well, what can we do that we can actually do? <laughs> and this is like pre having any knowledge of, uh, you know, the real filmmaking process, quote unquote. So ultimately, and it's been a consistent theme in the shorts and the, uh, and the features that I've attempted to do, but confinement thrillers. Mm -hmm. So like somehow we always, I always end up dealing with putting somebody in a confined space and, and pulling a thriller out of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did a short with like two people in a garage and they find a body in a trunk and it's them in the garage, which was kind of like Reservoir, De Re Reservoir Dogs influenced. We did a short with two, a couple in a motel room argu arguing about the meaning of the word love. Now it's a short with people in the bathroom, but the feature ultimately is, it's a, I call it a 90s coming of age love thriller. Mm -hmm. And it starts off where you get like something like Reality Bites where you're dealing with like your slacker kind of young adults trying to find themselves mm -hmm. and you get like a trifecta of all their intertwining lives mm -hmm. and then ultimately they all connect even further when they're all, all at odds with each other and they get confined and trapped in a car that just breaks down on them mm -hmm. and it's alluded to later that it might be uh, under the control of the devil mm -hmm. which ties into the theme that we're all our own worst devils and enemies so it's like it's kind of like a I would say it's one part Rea uh, reality bites and then kind of towards the end it becomes something more like David Lynch Lost Highway type of vibe. And how do you go about casting your projects? Um, well, uh, with Shut Up I would say it's the first time we actually, well we had a little bit of money so we could go a little bit more professional and we got a, a casting director. Um, and in doing so we were able to meet talent um, that really shined, even if they weren't right for the part. And uh, I should say, you know, not to, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything, but like with my writing, I do like to write sort of stylized and I love writing dialogue. I love writing dialogue more than dealing with structure or the A to Z's of stuff. Like I'll, I'll write a few pages of dialogue and then have to rein myself in and be like, where's this going? But in mentioning that, you know, I'm hoping that I'm finding actors who kind of get that my, that approach to dialogue. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I'm never rigid about that. And it's totally, if we have to drop like a couple sentences or everything, that's totally cool by me. But at the same time, um, when we saw these actors, Sydney and Ryan, who we, we had cast for the feature of Shut Up, they took lines that I, I didn't even think would work and made it work. Mm -hmm. And that was like uh, a red flag went up in the best of ways right away. And I was like, all right, I gotta keep these actors in mind obviously for the feature that I, at the time, I thought we were doing. But once that went on a hold, it was like, uh, well, again, like I was dwelling on, on the, f uh, not the failure, but the, de the feeling of defeat of, of that. And then it was like, take a cue from the script that I would inevitably do. And it's like, don't dwell, move on. Mm -hmm. I have these actors technically like wanting to collaborate. Let's do something. Mm -hmm. And then it was about what can we do right now in like mid-December, get it done before the holidays, not drag it out you know, no budget, but obviously you end up spending on something, whether it's $60 or $600, but, you know. And where's the best place to find out more information on you and on your projects online? Um, okay, well, jaredbrat.com. Uh, that's my own personal site, and it's kind of a blog format, so it's very easy to maneuver and find out what's new and what's upcoming. Uh, for streamer itself, at stream this short on Twitter, if you can follow us, we've got, like, wide range of followers now. <laughs> um, yeah, but at Stream the Short and then at Jared Brad on Twitter. And then Facebook. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jared. Congratulations and best of luck with your upcoming projects. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto.